Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go through and get first impressions on uh, several different whiskeys. These aren't necessarily large brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distilleries without much distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the Magnificent Bastards that sent the whiskey. So Dylan Almondral also donated this one, Magnificent Bastard. Dylan Almondral, you Magnificent Bastard. Now I'm going to tell you what I was going to tell you, but we already did one where I'm in the bourbon, right? Yes. On the last Whiskey Friday. Yes. But he, he wrote, hey, my name is Almondral. If you hack the shit out of my name, I will find and correct you. <laughs> and, Almondral. And you totally stumbled on the last one. I didn't even read this to you. Did I? The last one you called it, like, uh, Dillman. <laughs> And, and his, he immediately commented, and he immediately emailed me after that video went live. Dillman, Dillman? really? What the f is a Dillman? Nice. <laughs> now, the, the name on the screen was right, because okay. Fancy, Fancy Dan was Dan. doing it. But you called him Dillman Almond Draw. Fancy Dan? Well, Dillman is like a candy bar. Get, get my back. You throw up some Dillman. It's like, uh, you, got some, you got a king size Dillman in here? <laughs> is that like an Almond Joy? The, <laughs> the fancier less gross cousin of a chode. Oh, God. A Dillman. A Dillman. <laughs> <laughs> Dillman is an, a city archivist and a historian for the city of Santa Ana, California. I mean, that's a Dillman if I ever heard one. I mean, that's a job. That's... Right? That, what do you do for a living? I'm a city archivist Honestly, if his and name, historian. If his name was Dillman, yeah. I would have guessed that exactly as his career path. Yeah, if you had said Dillman. <laughs> My oh, name is Dillman. Oh, you're probably a historian. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens, guys, when you send whiskey to us. Phonetically. No, we say as, phonetically. As Rex. Well, and even phonetically, apparently I'll get it wrong half the time. <laughs> Dillman. Oh, man. I blame Dan. You know why? Because he could... You could take out the syllables that are incorrect. There's apps for that. Just push the button. Oh, there are? Just push the button, Dan. So he threw you under the bus. Yes. yes. Sure. Okay, this is Blinking Owl. This is the story that we actually liked their bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, this is their rye, two-year-old rye. This yeah. is batch two, bottle 100. Yeah. Straight rye, California whiskey. Remember these are the people who were like, anal about making it California. That's a... <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is rye, wheat, and barley. Why? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> that's what they said. Well, not really. They're, just, they're fixated on making it <laughs> California. <laughs> fixated. Oh, Lord. Dan, you're going to have to... <laughs> no! Just, as soon no. as I say that sentence, just go, <laughs> beep, and like message from our side. <laughs> Please, <the> technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, I have... It's, um, well, I have a really nice balance of uh, a, a, a fruitiness of vanilla and that rye spice. Well, this is rye wheat. This is like a, I'm getting a super cherry candy note that I don't normally get in rye. Cherry, you say? Yeah, and I wonder if it's the wheat sweetness instead of rye corn barley, it's rye wheat barley. See, I'm getting vanilla. I'm definitely getting vanilla. I'm looking for a cherry. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, the cre sweet cream hard candies that are uh, like v vanilla. There's one that is vanilla, cherry, or strawberries and cream. That's what it is. Okay. So that hard candy that's called strawberries and cream. Yeah. Have you ever tried one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that. Yeah, I like those. It's been years, but yeah. Yeah, man, I'm I, I'm not getting a cherry. This is first impression, so we got to move ah. on more quickly. All right. Ooh, berries and cream with... This like herbal spice Ooh. red. That's really wow. good. Wow. Son of a bitch. That might have just become a rye. I really. That's a really. It's really, very sweet and candied. It is. With a cigar be great. But it's also multi-layered. Mm-hmm. You got some really nice ah, balance. Can't do it. It's first impressions. Oh, you're about to go back. I was oh. about to go back and get some more because. It's 45%. I really like this. ABV. This is made by the only two people left in California because the rest of them have moved to Austin. Yeah. Yeah. S it's small fact. Thanks, Rogan. <laughs> Was that Rogan? <laughs> why, why Rogan? No, they've been moving to, uh, to Texas for years. Mm. That's fine. Oh, I like it. It is. 
It is it's sweet though. One of the sweetest ryes I've ever tried. Yes. It's sweet as as the sweetest bourbon that I've ever tried. Yeah. Um, but I, the rye keeps it from being clingy. It's it's the first approach, multi layered. The more you go, go back to it, I very quickly start to acclimate to these layers. So it starts to miss a step. Mm. Still a beautiful rye, but the thing that I initially just fell in love with. It's yeah, the really more nice. you sip, the more the spice. It just starts. Size. Yeah, and it starts to just become one generally nice tasting whiskey. But on the nose and on that first approach, damn, there's some really nice stuff going on in there. All and right. if you gave it more time between approaches, you could probably maintain the appreciation for everything going on in that glass. This is from Matt Nelson, a magnificent bastard from Denver, Colorado. Make sure I get it right. Matt Nelson. It's a tricky name. Matt Nelson. Did you write it? Because yeah. I need to make sure. Right there. No, okay. Matt Nelson. What was the other guy's name? Matt. What were the other? D Dillman. <laughs> Dillman is your magnificent <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Nelson, you magnificent bastard. So this is, uh, he's been a fan of the show for about a year. He decided to send us something. Uh. He's a huge fan of the country artist, Chris Ladow. Ladow. Which I always thought was a great name. <laughs> Ladow. <laughs> Ladow. Um, Ladow. This is batch five, bottle 188 of a uh, bourbon, straight, it's a straight whiskey, Gin? finished in wine barrels. Ooh, okay. I like it when ah. people color outside the lines here. Do we know what kind of wine barrels? Because there's a lot. They of don't, they don't name them, but this is a mix of Kentucky and Indiana bourbon. So MGP and who knows, maybe. Who else would you be sourcing from in Kentucky? Maybe Bardstown or something? Um, don't, you know don't actually know. You know what? I think it may be a Bardstown. Put your nose in there. That doesn't smell like MGP as much as it does Bardstown. Oh, yeah, it doesn't smell like MGP. It may be, because depending on what they put in with their but own again, stuff. I don't know if Bardstown is still, or who was it that was? But let me put it this way. Kentucky, Kentucky, um, what is it? Kentucky Distiller. Anyway, I can't, my I mind's hear, going so blank right now. Anytime, unless it's a mash bill that I'm not familiar with, an MGP mash bill I'm not familiar with. It might be. Yeah. I will tell you, the wine could be throwing us off a little bit. Uh, this is a Wyoming yeah. company who okay. the only thing they do is source and create spirits and wines for pe famous for people who want their own brand. Okay. This is that's all they do. Yeah. So you go to this company in Laramie, Wyoming. Yep. You tell them I want to make a whiskey with my name on it. I'm Chris Ladow, and then they go source it and blend it, and then yeah. release your branded whiskey. There's a um, there's a similar thing that's becoming more and more popular in the YouTube space. Mm. Uh, coffee companies reaching out to creators saying, hey. Do you want to put together a coffee blend? We'll put your packaging on it. We'll do all the product fulfillment and all that stuff. Nice. Yeah. I drink coffee. Is it good coffee? I have never had it. I just oh. know it's becoming more and more of a popular thing. It's just all one big company. Right. That's just sending all the stuff out. Okay. They let the creator have some samples. They say, I like that one. And then they put a thing on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's fine. All right. So I'm not going to compare that. I don't actually know Chris Ladow. Matt Nelson's a Chris Ladow fan. Um, I mean, I know who Chris Ladow is, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really listen to country. So on the, this is very classic bourbon on the nose. I'm not sure what the wine is bringing to the table for me. Taste it and you'll see. It, it, it's almost like you used wine to water down a whiskey. You know what I mean? Wow. It starts as whiskey and then you get it this like wrapped. sweet. From beginning to end, it just wraps all the way around that. Yeah, and then it just, there's no finish. And then it tastes like it got watered down with wine. That's bizarre. What is the, this gotta be low. 40. 40, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not my thing. Uh, I'd be very curious to see what that, because the wine character shows up even at the 40%. Yeah. I'd be very curious to see what that wine character did at a higher proof, at whatever proof that, that bourbon needed mm -hmm. to really start showing up and, and throwing some elbows there. I think that could be an interesting, oh, this is first Well, impression. it keeps changing in the nose. I went back and smelled it and I smelled vegetable, vegetables like a vegetation. And then that went away and my next smell, it went like super candy sweet. No, I'm still it getting- It vacillates back and forth between veg, vegetal and right. candy. I'm still getting that classic proof down bourbon on that nose. The most interesting thing for, so far for me is on the taste where the wine yeah. shows up and it's different, it's unique, but I'm not in love with it. I wish it was a higher proof so I could explore it a little bit more. All right, the next one is a gift from someone who will soon 
William, William Shepard. Shepard has sent us like seven boxes. Still of you magnificent. Yeah, but right now he's still just a magnificent bastard. William Shepard, you magnificent bastard. Fight. We had to like open up a storage account in downtown to hold the boxes that William keeps shipping us. We'll be 70 I years old. I can't figure it, yeah. 70 years old. God damn it, William. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Let me go home. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Seven Devils, and we've done their whiskey before. Last time we did the bourbon. This time it's a rye. It's Koenig Distillery this is in a- Idaho, but I think it's sourced, and I don't know where it's sourced from. They just say produced by how about, or bottled by. How about Canada? Oh, it does smell like it's, but it's a rye. I guess it could be Canadian. That it smells really good. smells Canadian. Very much Canadian. Wow. That nose, yeah. But you know, here's the thing, they would have to say that. I, I'm just saying it smills very Canadian. It we, says distilled, distilled, sourced in North America. North America? Um, Is Canada part of North America? Yes. Come on guys, it's that's North America. That's bullshit. You have to say where it was distilled if it wasn't distilled in the US. And it's not Idaho rye whiskey if you well, again, this, is, a, this is us going off of five seconds William? on the nose. This is us, five seconds on the nose. It just smells Canadian. And it jumps out as Canadian. Oh, yeah. Maybe we're not right, but I don't know. We've had a few whiskeys. Look, seven devils. To compare it to other Canadians we've had. If it's not Canadian, if it's not Canadian, right. come in the comments, correct yourselves. Well. Or correct us. And uh, there have been very few, but there have been at least uh, a, a couple of American U.S. distilleries that said, "Hey, we really love Canadian whiskey, and we wanted to try and do that." Mm-hmm. And they do; they make mm-hmm. something very similar to Canadian. Yeah. So it's not there's nothing magical about being in Canada where you get these flavors. You can do it in the states, but this is a very Canadian type of. Palette. I will say that they, according to the website, if I'm reading it the way I think they mean it, it looks like they're getting distillate from wherever they're sourcing and then aging it at their place in Idaho. Look, if you like Canadian whiskey, this is going to be your gym. Um, Did you hear that? If, yeah, the, they're not sourcing made whiskey. Right. And bottling it, they're sourcing new the, make, yes, putting it in barrels, and aging it in Idaho. Yeah. In if I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt on that, fine. Um, but it is going to be on the budget Canadian end. That's going to be where you find your comparables. Yeah, it's got a little bit of barrel spice. Yeah. Or rice. Sp- I mean, I don't know. It's got that ca- that Canadian caramel vanilla. Yeah. A little bit of like a little bit of a metallic. Note Reminds there. me of the Crown Royal rye a little bit. A, a little. It's not overly complicated. It's very drinkable. It's not totally boring, but it's simple. Yeah, there's a metallic note that I'm not Woo. wildly in love with. Oh, it's getting sweeter. The vanilla is climbing the charts. Well, for me, the, the sweetness builds and the metallic note keeps building on itself the more yeah, you go back each to time. That. Yeah. Okay, this is a gift. Come on. Get it. Come on, also from William Shepard. Yeah. I can't find Wait, the- uh, Hold on. You were given like the, I know, and the I keep, best knives. I keep leaving it somewhere, all of the knives. and I don't know where I keep leaving it. On your desk, you have all of the knives. I do have like fifteen knives. You should give me the knives. No. Uh, you want me to swing the? I knife don't around? trust you with a knife. I have all the skills. I have knife skills. I have knife skills. Karate skills. <laughs> okay, this is from Stein Distillery. This is a straight bourbon whiskey, and from Joseph, Oregon, two-year-old bourbon. This is another William Shepard jam. Whoa! That is William's going for the weird stuff, too. That is a. Uh, it's like a for me. That's presenting as a rice spicy granola with a little bit of that craft pine note. Yeah, the pine the pine note is strong for me in this one. Yeah, I'm getting more of a rice spicy granola. That pine note's there, but it's underneath granola, rice spicy, and then that craft piney note. Ah oh, man, which I neither hope it one tastes, of us are in love with. No, I I hope it tastes different than it smells. Piney, and then almost, almost presents as a soapy note on the nose. Oh, it tastes. It that's that sort of clingy, soap cling, yeah. is in the palate too. And that I still found that rice spice. It's forty. I wonder if they crash proofed that. Maybe. What he's talking about is if you. Proof down a whiskey too quickly, um, it can uh, cause this thing called saponification. Mm-hmm. What is this? It's when the reaction of water with the existing chemical structure in whiskey creates a new component that has all the flavors of like soap 
and uh, like soapy, clingy notes. That's not a super strong note for me. I was getting a little bit more of it on the nose. On the taste though, this is, I'm looking for, again, you know what? It's missing, there's a richness that's missing to these flavors. These are very familiar flavors to me. The, the, the granola flavor, a little bit of a, um, a spiciness, a dusting of a spiciness. And then there's that pine note, and the pine note turns into like, uh, what is that? Like a... Well, okay, so I'm gonna say something. You know, when you ever been into someone's uh, bathroom, like, an, like grandparents or an elderly aunt, uncle, or like a, like a bed and breakfast type place where the soaps are shaped like things? Yeah. <laughs> like you have like a clamshell soap. You need to wash or, your hands, uh, but yeah. that's too fancy. I can't use that. Yeah, and they always have this like, really light, not dense, but really like light, perfumey, but soap. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what this is reminding me of in the taste and the smell. <laughs> is this like soap, but perfume, but... Again, but that specific note, I think that note, for me at least, that's gonna be in there, but it's a minor note. I am getting more of what I was talking about earlier, like a granola, a little bit of spice in there. And then I don't wanna say, it's like a thinned out honey in there too, maybe? Yeah, it's, if, it's, if there's honey, it's really thin. Yeah. Almost watery. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's a low proof whiskey. I'm gonna go back to the first thing I set down. 80 proof. Which was the 40%. blinking owl rye, is it, is it if I can remember. Owl? Oh, here it is. Yeah. I put it in the wrong order. I picked that one up and that was definitely not it. All right. Yeah, that rye, that's my favorite thing we did today. I am genuinely cu curious about the, the previous whiskey. If that was, in fact, a Canadian jam. Mm. I think it's a Oh, the, the Seven Devils? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's gotta be like, God, yeah. that's gotta be, come on. <laughs> Here's defining stealing a drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.